Now celebrating the life of Tom Petty, who passed away last night. Rock legends like the Beatles' Paul McCartney and the Rolling Stones' Mick Jagger. ABC's Chris Conley had a look back at Tom Petty's life. Tom Petty, an iconic figure in rock and roll, enjoyed immense success with his band, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Together, they released 13 studio albums, while Petty pursued solo projects, adding three more albums. With over 80 million records sold, Petty's talent and charisma cemented his status as a rock star. However, his sudden passing left fans mourning and speculating, particularly after the release of his autopsy report. Join us today as we explore Tom Petty's life, death, and the revelations in the autopsy report. Early Life Born on October 20, 1950 in Gainesville, Florida, Tom Petty emerged as the eldest son of Earl and Kitty Petty. Growing up in the residential district of Northeast Gainesville, fondly dubbed the Duck Pond by locals, young Tom sought refuge in music amid the trials of his childhood. During his schooling years, Petty enrolled at Howard Bishop Middle School, where he showcased his athletic prowess on both the baseball diamond and basketball court. Later, he transitioned to Gainesville High School, proudly donning his graduation cap in 1968. However, throughout all these important moments, music was always the most important part of Petty's story. When Petty was just 10 years old, he had a remarkable encounter. He met the legendary Elvis Presley face to face. This extraordinary moment happened because Petty's uncle got a job on the set of Presley's movie, Follow That Dream. Being there and seeing Presley in action ignited a deep passion for rock and roll in Petty's heart. He was instantly captivated and became a devoted fan of Presley. When he returned home, Petty made a bold decision. He traded his Wham! slingshot for a collection of Elvis 45s, symbolizing the beginning of his journey toward becoming a rock star. In 1964, the cosmos aligned as the Beatles graced The Ed Sullivan Show, casting a spellbinding aura over Petty and countless others. It was a transformative moment, as Petty, like many aspiring musicians, knew with resolute certainty that his destiny lay in forming a band. The Beatles, with their extraordinary harmony and musical prowess, motivated Petty to shift his focus from sports to rock and roll. As garage bands sprouted up across the country, Petty embarked on his own musical adventure. Seeking guidance, he found a mentor in his hometown of Gainesville, Don Felder, a local resident who would later achieve fame with the Eagles. Though initially teaching Petty guitar, Felder's unexpected suggestion led Petty to explore the piano, a pivotal moment that influenced his musical trajectory. Petty's musical expedition began in earnest when he joined forces with a local ensemble known as The Epics where he honed his bass skills and reveled in the joy of jam sessions. At the tender age of 17, Petty took a bold leap, forsaking formal education to chase his dreams alongside a new band, Mudcrutch. The band's name paid tribute to the rural backgrounds of some members, a stroke of creative brilliance that reflected the group's diverse and spirited nature. While Mudcrutch's ascent was not immediate, Petty's unwavering commitment caught the attention of Shelter Records, who recognized his singular talent and offered him a solo contract. Petty seized the opportunity with gusto, proving the skeptics wrong as his star ascended meteorically. In just a few short years, his artistic brilliance illuminated the world stage, garnering widespread acclaim and capturing the hearts of audiences far and wide. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers Reconnecting with his former Mud Crutch companions Mike Campbell and Benmont Tench, Alongside bassist Ron Blair and drummer Stan Lynch, Petty catalyzed the formation of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Restructuring their agreement with Shelter Records, they unveiled their self-titled debut album in November 1976. Initially met with lukewarm reception, the album struggled to gain traction until a transformative journey overseas. Venturing on a tour of England alongside Niels Lofgren, the band's dynamic performances captured the attention of audiences and critics alike, catapulting them into the spotlight and earning them a coveted spot on the British charts. Seizing the momentum of their newfound popularity, Shelter Records reissued the single Breakdown in the United States. The track surged to number 40 on the charts, marking a watershed moment in the band's burgeoning career and offering a tantalizing taste of the success that lay ahead. 
Surprisingly, the iconic anthem American Girl failed to make waves in the United States until nearly two decades later when it was re-released. Undeterred by initial setbacks, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers resolved to forge ahead, returning to the studio to craft their sophomore effort, You're Gonna Get It! This album surpassed its predecessor, ascending to number 23 on the charts and featuring standout tracks like Listen to Her Heart and I Need to Know. However, the band encountered a roadblock when Shelter Records underwent a change in ownership, being acquired by MCA Records. Petty's efforts to renegotiate their contract resulted in protracted legal battles that left him financially depleted and disillusioned. Undeterred, in 1979, the band took the stage at the Musicians United for Safe Energy concert at Madison Square Garden, contributing to the album No Nukes with their rendition of Cry to Me. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers persevered, achieving significant milestones with their fourth album, Hard Promises, released in 1981. This critically acclaimed record soared into the top 10, attaining platinum status and spawning the chart-topping single, The Waiting. Notably, this album marked Petty's inaugural collaboration with Stevie Nicks on the poignant duet, Insider, showcasing the band's evolving musical prowess and enduring relevance in the rock landscape. Following the departure of bassist Ron Blair, Howie Epstein stepped in for their fifth album, Long After Dark, released in 1982, featuring the hit single, You Got Lucky. In 1985, the band made a memorable appearance at the historic Live Aid concert in Philadelphia, captivating audiences with four electrifying performances at John F. Kennedy Stadium. That same year, they unveiled the album Southern Accents, highlighted by the smash hit, Don't Come Around Here No More. The album's iconic music video, helmed by Dave Stewart, saw Petty donning the persona of the Mad Hatter, whimsically chasing Alice from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland before whimsically devouring her like a cake. The subsequent tour yielded the live album Pack Up the Plantation Live and a coveted invitation from Bob Dylan to join him on his True Confessions tour. In the years 1986 and 1987, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers embarked on a series of dates with the Grateful Dead further solidifying their status as stalwarts of the rock scene. Their 1987 release, Let Me Up, I've Had Enough, featured the memorable collaboration with Dylan, Jamming Me. Throughout their journey, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers continued to captivate audiences with their distinctive sound and energetic performances, more powerful hits. After navigating through a tumultuous legal dispute with MCA, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers found refuge under the wing of MCA's subsidiary, Backstreet Records. The band dove headfirst into their next musical venture, crafting what would become their iconic album, Damn the Torpedoes, unleashed upon the world in 1979. Swiftly ascending to the lofty heights of number two on the charts, the album garnered over three million copies sold, propelled by standout tracks like Don't Do Me Like That and Refugee. With this triumph, Petty and his cohorts firmly entrenched themselves as rock superstars, basking in the glow of their newfound success. However, Petty wasn't one to rest on his laurels. When MCA proposed hiking the price of their forthcoming album, he took a defiant stance, threatening to withhold the recordings or humorously dub it 898. Petty made it clear that artistic integrity trumped corporate demands. Eventually, the label relented and the album, aptly titled Hard Promises, emerged in 1981. Debuting at number five on the charts and attaining platinum status, the lead track The Waiting soared to the coveted number one spot, marking a triumphant milestone in the band's illustrious career. In that eventful year, Petty embarked on a collaborative journey with Stevie Nicks, lending his talents to her album Belladonna and co-producing the chart-topping duet Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Simultaneously, he took on the role of producer for Del Shannon's album, Drop Down and Get Me. Returning to the studio with the Heartbreakers, Petty sustained his winning streak with the release of Long After Dark in 1982. The album soared to number nine on the charts, with the singles You Got Lucky and Deliver Me climbing to impressive positions of number 20 and number 21, respectively.
New York and Collaborations. In their quest for a fresh musical trajectory, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers sought the expertise of producers Dave Stewart, Robbie Robertson, and Jimmy Iovine for their forthcoming album. The recording sessions unfolded with an eclectic array of additional musicians and backup singers as the band delved into various sonic landscapes and stylistic nuances. However, orchestrating such a diverse ensemble proved to be a daunting and time-consuming task, sparking tensions among the band members. At one juncture, Petty's frustration boiled over, culminating in a forceful punch to a studio wall, resulting in a broken left hand. Despite the obstacles encountered along the way, the band's fifth studio album, Southern Accents, saw the light of day in 1985. Debuting at number seven on the charts, the album showcased a fusion of musical elements and featured notable singles such as Rebels, Make It Better, Forget About Me, and Don't Come Around Here No More. Particularly, the latter track, a neo-psychedelic masterpiece co-written by Dave Stewart and inspired by Stevie Nicks, ascended to number 13 on the charts, captivating audiences with its mesmerizing soundscape and evocative storytelling. The iconic music video with its whimsical Alice in Wonderland theme became a sensation during the heyday of MTV, further propelling Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers' meteoric rise to stardom. In 1986, the band embarked on a memorable tour with none other than Bob Dylan, not only serving as Dylan's backup band, but also treating audiences to their own electrifying performances. Following the tour, they returned to the studio to craft their album, Let Me Up, I've Had Enough. While the album reached a respectable number 20 on the charts and spawned the hit single Jamming Me, which soared to number one in the United Kingdom, it achieved only moderate success compared to their earlier works. Nevertheless, Petty's enduring friendship with Dylan led to another fruitful collaboration with George Harrison, Roy Orbison, and Jeff Lynne. Together, they formed the supergroup Traveling Wilburys, releasing their self-titled debut album in 1988. The record soared to number three on the charts, achieved triple platinum status, and earned the Grammy Award for Best Rock Performance. Continued Success Tom Petty's musical odyssey embarked on an exhilarating trajectory when he delved into his inaugural solo endeavor under Warner Brothers. Teaming up with acclaimed producer Rick Rubin, Petty unveiled his second solo album, Wildflowers, in 1994. The album achieved remarkable success, nearly rivaling his previous solo triumph, Full Moon Fever. It boasted standout tracks such as You Don't Know How It Feels, You Wreck Me, and It's Good To Be King. In 1996, Petty reunited with the Heartbreakers, without Stan Lynch who had departed in 1994, to craft the gold-certified soundtrack for the film She's the One. Concurrently, he lent his musical talents to Johnny Cash's album Unchained. However, this period was underscored by personal tribulations, as Petty navigated through a divorce after 22 years of marriage and grappled with heroin addiction. Nonetheless, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers remained steadfast in their resilience, demonstrating unwavering commitment to their fans. This was epitomized by their extraordinary feat of performing 20 consecutive sold-out shows at the Fillmore in San Francisco in 1997. Subsequently, they returned to the studio with Rick Rubin at the helm to produce the highly regarded album Echo, which ascended to the top 10 in 1999. Petty's devotion to his fan base was unmistakable, as evidenced by his decision to initially offer the single Free Girl Now as a free MP3 download and his steadfast refusal to raise ticket prices for their ensuing tour. As the new millennium dawned, Tom Petty turned his focus towards rebuilding his personal life, triumphantly overcoming his heroin addiction. In this journey of self-renewal, he found love and solace in Dana York, whom he had encountered a decade prior. In 2002, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers unleashed their 11th album, The Last DJ, wherein Petty candidly articulated his ongoing frustrations with the music industry. Despite his grievances, the industry acknowledged his unparalleled talent, culminating in the band's induction into the prestigious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that same year. Tragically, bassist Howie Epstein was compelled to part ways with the group due to his own struggles with heroin addiction 
ultimately succumbing to an overdose the following year. To fill the void, original bassist Ron Blair rejoined the Heartbreakers. In 2006, Petty embarked on yet another solo endeavor, teaming up with Jeff Lynne to craft the album Highway Companion, which ascended to an impressive number four on the charts. The following year, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers became the focal point of a captivating four-hour documentary titled Running Down a Dream, providing an intimate glimpse into their illustrious career. Their musical prowess reached even greater heights when they graced the stage during the halftime show of Super Bowl Eklund Tuckend in 2008, captivating audiences with their electrifying performance. In a remarkable journey back to his musical origins, Tom Petty reunited with his pre-Heartbreakers band Mud Crutch during the same year. More than three decades after their initial formation, they recorded their self-titled debut album, rekindling the raw energy and passion of their early days. In 2010, Petty rejoined forces with the Heartbreakers for the live studio album Mojo and embarked on several years of electrifying touring. Then, in 2014, the band released their 13th studio album, Hypnotic Eye, which astonishingly claimed the coveted top spot on the charts. This monumental achievement marked a significant milestone for the band, acting career. Indeed, Tom Petty, the legendary musician, showcased his versatility by venturing into the realm of acting. In 1978, he made a brief appearance in the film FM, followed by a small role in Made in Heaven in 1987. But Petty's foray into the world of acting didn't stop there. He also graced the small screen with his presence. From 1987 to 1990, he portrayed himself as one of the neighbors on It's Gary Shandling's show, and later he had a memorable role on The Larry Sanders Show, where he found himself in a scuffle with Greg Kinnear. Petty even made a delightful cameo on The Simpsons in 2002, alongside rock icons like Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, spoofing themselves and offering Homer Simpson some lyrical guidance. But Petty's ventures into the world of entertainment extended beyond acting alone. He lent his voice to a character on the animated series King of the Hill from 2004 to 2009, adding his distinctive flair to the show. And let's not forget his super brief yet memorable appearance in the Lonely Island's music video Great Day in 2010, where he shared the screen with comedian Andy Samberg for just five seconds. Seeing Petty branch out and have fun in various creative outlets truly highlights his multifaceted talent and unbridled creativity. Tom Petty was undoubtedly a true visionary and a force to be reckoned with in the world of entertainment. Personal life, struggles, marriage, loss. Tom Petty's journey through life was marked by adversity, including a challenging relationship with his father. Petty candidly revealed that his father struggled to accept his son's gentle nature and artistic inclinations, subjecting him to both verbal and physical abuse. Describing his father as a wild gambling drinker, Petty found solace and solidarity in the unwavering support of his mother and his brother Bruce. In 1974, Petty found love and companionship when he married Jane Benyo, with whom he welcomed two daughters into their lives. Adria, who would later become a director, and Anakim, an artist. Interestingly, Benyo's meeting with Petty at the age of 17 served as inspiration for a famous song by Stevie Nicks. Due to a mishearing of Benyo's North Florida accent, Nicks titled her song Edge of Seventeen. One unforgettable event that left a significant impact was the tragic incident that occurred on May 17, 1987, when an arsonist deliberately set fire to Tom Petty's residence in Encino, California. Despite the devastation wrought by the flames, Firefighters managed to salvage the basement recording studio, along with the original tapes stored there. Miraculously, Petty's beloved Gibson Dove acoustic guitar survived the blaze, though his signature gray top hat was lost forever. Sadly, the perpetrator responsible for the arson was never apprehended, leaving a lingering sense of injustice in its wake. Petty's Final Days Unveiling a Startling Revelation on Sunday, October 1st, 2017, a somber shadow fell upon the earth as Dana York, Tom Petty's wife, made a heartbreaking discovery. She found him not breathing and in cardiac arrest at their home. Swiftly, 
he was resuscitated and rushed to the UCLA Medical Center in Santa Monica, California, where doctors fought tirelessly to save his life. Despite their valiant efforts, Tom Petty passed away on October 2nd at 8.40 p.m. The news of his death spread rapidly, causing confusion and uncertainty due to some premature reports throughout the day. It was undoubtedly a roller coaster of emotions for his family, friends, and fans as they grappled with the reality of losing such a beloved artist. A few days later, on October 16th, 2017, a poignant memorial service was held to honor Tom Petty's life. The serene setting of the Self-Realization Fellowship Lake Shrine in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles, provided a fitting backdrop for the gathering. Taking place just four days before what would have been his 67th birthday, the occasion served as a poignant opportunity for people to come together, share memories, and pay their heartfelt respects to the music icon. In January 2018, the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner released a statement shedding light on the cause of Tom Petty's untimely death. It was determined to be an accidental overdose resulting from multi-system organ failure due to resuscitated cardiopulmonary arrest caused by mixed drug toxicity. The toxicology report revealed the presence of several substances in his system, including opioids like fentanyl, oxycodone, acetylfentanyl, and dyspropionyl fentanyl. Additionally, benzodiazepines such as temazepam and alprazolam, along with the antidepressant citalopram, were also detected. The report highlighted the complex mix of medications that Petty had ingested. In a statement on Tom Petty's website, his wife and daughter offered their perspective on his passing. They shared that Petty had been grappling with various medical issues, including empyema, knee difficulties, and a fractured hip. To alleviate the pain associated with these ailments, he had been prescribed medication. On the day of his death, he had been informed that his hip injury had worsened. In their statement, his wife and daughter conveyed their belief that the pain had become unbearable, leading to an overuse of medication. They considered his death to be a tragic accident, in line with the findings of the coroner's report. This revelation provided insight into the complexities of Petty's medical challenges and the unfortunate circumstances surrounding his passing. In September 2018, Tom Petty's widow, Dana, granted an interview where she offered poignant insights into his state of mind before his passing. She disclosed that he had chosen to postpone the hip surgery recommended by his doctors. Petty had a strong intuition that his last tour was drawing to a close, and he harbored a profound sense of duty towards his dedicated crew, many of whom had been by his side for decades, as well as his steadfast fans. On the day preceding his untimely death, Petty exudes positivity, brimming with pride, happiness, and excitement for the future. Little did anyone anticipate that he would depart so suddenly, leaving behind an enduring legacy in the realm of music. Dana's reflections provided a touching glimpse into Petty's final moments and underscored the profound impact he continues to wield in the hearts and minds of music aficionados worldwide. Awards and honor. Tom Petty's iconic status was recognized through numerous awards, a tribute to his enduring impact on the music industry. In 1994, a tribute album titled You Got Lucky featured bands like Everclear and Silkworm, paying homage to Petty's influence. In April 1996, he received UCLA's George Gershwin and Ira Gershwin Award for Lifetime Musical Achievement, followed by the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers Golden Note Award the next month. The band Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1999 for their contributions to the recording industry. In December 2001, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and Petty was further honored with an exhibit of his items from July 2006 to 2007. His legacy was solidified by ranking 91st on Rolling Stone's list of the greatest artists of all time. Additionally, Petty received the Billboard Century Award, the organization's highest honor for creative achievement, on December 6, 2005. In September 2006, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers were honored with the keys to the city of Gainesville, Florida, where they either lived or grew up. Peter Bogdanovich's documentary film, Running Down a Dream, chronicling Petty's career, premiered at the New York Film Festival in October 2007. 
In February 2017, Petty was celebrated as the Music Heirs Person of the Year for his musical contributions and philanthropy. Following Petty's passing in 2017, a tribute to him was painted on Gainesville's Southwest 34th Street Wall, expressing love and gratitude. On what would have been his 6080 birthday in October 2018, the city of Gainesville renamed the former Northeast Park, a place Petty frequented in his youth as Tom Petty Park. In December 2021, the University of Florida's Board of Trustees unanimously decided to posthumously award Petty with an honorary PhD from the school. Tom Petty has garnered recognition for his musical achievements with three albums, Wildflowers, Damn the Torpedoes, and Full Moon Fever, featured on Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, along with two songs, American Girl and Free Fallen, on the 500 greatest songs of all time list. In October 2022, the University of Florida's Pride of the Sunshine dedicated their halftime show to Tom Petty's music as part of the inaugural Tom Petty Day, with subsequent performances throughout the 2022 to 2023 football season. In December 2023, Petty's song Love is a Long Road was featured in the first trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6, contributing to its massive popularity with over 90 million YouTube views in 24 hours and significant increases in streaming and search activity on platforms like Spotify and iTunes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.